The Appalachian Marsh is a wetland with a spatter dock pond, wet meadows, and wet woods. Trees respire just like animals, and soaked soil with little or no oxygen is limiting, as roots can drown. Some trees that don't mind wet feet include swamp oak, red maple, beech, black cherry, white pine, and tupelo. Like the standing dead trees, the ancient shipwrecks below are also reminders of time passing in this protected area. Roots must support the trees in all sorts of weather, and yet be able to breathe. Compromises are made. Here's a large black cherry tree, nearly 90 feet tall, that was pushed over by a northwest wind a few years ago. Cherries, like the other trees mentioned, are shallow-rooted and are sometimes toppled by the wind. Though some of the smaller roots are gone, note how small the overall structure is. What a balancing act. Typically these trees have many large lateral roots and smaller feeder roots, but not much deeper down where the soil can be wet for long periods. A walk around this area will show this lateral strategy, with many exposed roots sometimes far from their source. There's a lot happening underfoot, and here a shallow habit wins. Let's look at another above-ground example. This is one of the smaller American elms at the marsh, barely six and a half inches in diameter. It's doing what elms do in wet places, making buttress roots. They provide support and can also help in root air exchange. And a wide footprint brings stability. Wetlands are ecosystems of edges and layers and transitions. In a way, they're an analog to productive coral reefs. This is a spatterdock marsh full of water lilies, cattails, and buttonbush. But trees have also come down to the water and adapted. <laughs> 